for one second, and look what her does. Sticks his hand right in my puff. I don't even know how that happened. I just reached for the camera, and the next thing I knew, I was covered in cream puff. <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. We are in one of the most ancient cities in the entire world today, the city of Rome. No, I don't think so. This doesn't look like Rome. To be honest, up until now, we've avoided Rome because it is one of the most touristy places on the planet, and we don't really do that well in such intense crowds. So uh, <laughs> that being said, there is so much amazing history in this city, so much to see and do. There's a ton of really good food to eat, so we are at least going to take this one day before we move on to other parts of Italy, and we are going to explore Rome as much as we can. So we actually came in the shoulder season. It's actually November, and I think today there's free entrance everywhere. I don't know if that means it's gonna be way busy. I don't know how this compares to normal time yeah, of year. Yeah, but it's pretty busy. I have to say, busy. by my standards, it's pretty busy. Yeah, but not quite as bad. But before we head inside or explore any of the other monuments here in the city, we're going, we haven't had breakfast yet, so we're going to head to a more local part of the city to sort that out first. Yes, breakfast time, here we go. We've got our coffee. We are sitting on the street and it's quite loud. <laughs> it's a little so. loud, sorry. But this is the maritozzo. These little guys are super simple. They are just little sweet buns that have been cut in half and they put whipped cream in there. It used to be, I think, more of a snack, but now it's become a pretty common breakfast here in Rome. Or I hear a, a late night, maybe drunk food. <laughs> People say you eat this when you're right before you go to bed after you've been out drinking. I don't know. I think it's going to be really messy. They didn't give us any silverware or anything with it. Yeah, I think you just eat it. It's like a cream puff or something but a lot of cream oh it's like an open-faced donut that's what it tastes like except the dough in there is a little more bready like a dinner roll maybe a little more yeasty but then this is like nice whipped cream that you would get inside of a donut sometimes it really reminds me of like a not so sweet donut this is really good <laughs> so these little guys are two euros a piece i don't know yet if that's actually expensive or not it doesn't seem so bad but the place we wanted to go to was actually called il Meri Mer Why are you meritozzo meritozzo <laughs> it's actually called this and it was right across the street from our apartment so if you're in that area maybe look that one up maybe they'll be cheaper but these look and taste exactly how I was hoping. So I think they're pretty legit. Other than being really loud, because we're right on a busy street, this is really nice. There's a bunch of tables just along the sidewalk here. Pretty sure these are nothing but locals that were sitting around, which is always a good sign. The bread isn't like pillowy soft or anything like that. It's a little bit hard. Let's give it a try. I get it all over me. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> Great. Wow, that's really good. Messy, but good. The cream is so puffy and whipped. So you have this really light airiness of the cream, but then the bread is pretty dense down here. It's definitely kind of like an open-faced donut, like Allison said, but it's really delicious. Definitely worth trying for two euro, I'd say. I turned my back for one second and look what her does. Sticks his hand right in my puff. I don't even know how that happened. I just reached for the camera and the next thing I knew I was covered in cream puff. <laughs> Travel back with me to the second century when a disgraced emperor challenged the fiercest gladiator and general Rome had ever known to battle to the death. That is right. Right here, in this exact spot, Joaquin Phoenix challenged Russell Crowe to fight, and they both died. We watched Gladiator last <laughs> night. That's why she's doing this whole bit. <laughs> it's true, right? Historical fiction? Very historically yeah. accurate. Now it's time for some real facts. That's where I come in. <laughs> The last battle actually took place here in 435 AD. It is estimated that over 500,000 people and 1 million animals died in this arena right here. The real question is how many people can this arena accommodate? Well, back in its heyday, about 50,000 people. So that is a huge arena. Considering the technology of the day and how long ago that was, it's incredible that they could house that many people at one time in one place. We 
we've come across from the Coliseum and you get this really epic view. The ticket to the Coliseum gets you access to a bunch of other attractions, so the Forum is one of those, and it's right across the street from the Coliseum. If you go into the Forum and then go to where the uh, Temple of Venus is, then you can get a view like this. It's pretty cool. A lot less people up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. You can take your time, take it in, mm -hmm. see it from a different perspective. Watch the beautiful construction going on. There's a lot of construction There's a lot going of on. Construction, sadly, right? I know it's really crowded, but uh, it's definitely worth seeing all this stuff because I mean, if you like history, it's really nice to see a lot of the preserved ruins and just you don't usually see such full scale items. It's usually really isolated, so it's cool that it starts at the Coliseum. You can wander through the forum, through the parks here, and it's all just ancient amazingness. We just popped over to the Trastevere neighborhood, which. My Italian is not so good, so that pronunciation is probably off. But it's supposed to be one of the prettiest and maybe most underrated neighborhoods in all of Rome. We will be coming back here for dinner and some other things though, so we probably won't explore too much now. Right now, we're just on a food mission. We're gonna go to a place to get, I think, one of the most popular kind of street food snack items. I'm very excited. It's gonna be super savory and I'm so hungry, I cannot wait. Rice, sauce, and cheese, different variations that are then breaded and deep fried and eaten as a little snack. I imagine it'd be really good with a beer or wine, but I don't see any in here. Yeah. We were kind of sad about that. Yeah, <laughs> but so we got a traditional kind. We got one that has cheese and pepper in it, and then one with amatriciano, amatriciano, which is should have uh, pork in there. When we rip this guy open, there should be a nice thick ring of mozzarella in there that's gonna split apart, and I'm very excited to see that and then to immediately devour it. So this is more of the classic one, I think. I kind of lost track of which one was which, <laughs> but the balls are surprisingly firm on the outside. Oh, well, there we go. Got the string of mozzarella. It's a little hot, so. <laughs> Jeez, that is so stringy. Look at that, that's insane. Mm. Wow, look at that. <laughs> there is no escaping it. It's an absolutely delicious, savory, tomatoey treat. The textures in this thing are great. You've got this hard outer shell, and then you have a dense ball of delicious rice on the inside with mozzarella cheese and just this tomatoey deliciousness holding it all together. It's like a giant mozzarella stick with rice on the inside. Oh, jeez. Look at that. <laughs> Awesome. Now I get to try one. I think this is the one he said cheese and pepper in there. We walk in oh. just as they finish these ones too. Yeah, so they're piping hot. Oh my god. It looks like risotto. Deep fried risotto. No string, but that's okay. I'm just killing time because I'm scared it's gonna burn me. That is so good. It's so deceptively cheesy and creamy in there. It looks like it could be dry or something, but it is not at all. And the pepper adds a nice little spice to it, a really nice dynamic. The cheese is so good. And that rice is perfectly cooked, so it's a little bit chewy, but it's still really dense and thick. And then it's just fried perfectly. Is the outside of that as firm as this one? It's pretty crunchy, yeah. Yeah, this it's one looked a little so bit lighter nice. in color. Yeah, so it's not as hard, I think, but oh my gosh, it's so good. Now, this is definitely what I would be eating after a night out of drinking. In total, we paid five euro for these three, which I feel like is an entire meal for a person. So five euros a lot of food. Yeah, and then two euros for breakfast. Oh. That place is very easy to miss. It's another literal hole in the wall <laughs> that's completely unmarked. They have a bunch of really delicious looking stuff in all the cases. And of course, the dish that we tried, which I highly recommend trying, it was very good. It was so good. Yeah, a little bit more filling than what we had this morning, so that's a good thing. <laughs> we forgot to mention our good friends, Thomas and Sheena from Chasing a Plate, actually went and tried this place and they assured us it was good and they did not let us down. That was phenomenal. All right, we're nice and full and we still have more of Rome to see, so onward. He spotted me and wanted to be my best friend, apparently. <laughs> this is where he lives now. <laughs> you want to come home with me? He's got a little mustache, we call him Charlie. Your name's Charlie the Cat. Charlie Cat. That's 
Perfect. Charlie Catlin. Oh, you missed my joke. Oh. So if you haven't guessed by now, we came to a cat sanctuary that's in the middle of the city, and it's actually a bunch of ruins where they allow these cats to live. And it's because there's actually a law in Rome. That's horrible. There's actually a law in Rome that says wherever, I think it's five or more cats are living together, you can't mess with them, you can't chew them away, you can't do anything, you have to just let them be. So that's what happened here. There was a bunch of cats hanging out and they just let them be and this is now a cat sanctuary. And I love it. <laughs> this is number one must do thing when you're in Rome. Come to this cat sanctuary. Find this little guy, little Charlie. <laughs> little Charlie. This is his home now. He's never gonna leave me alone. <laughs> I tried to push him off of me, but he, won't, he wasn't having it. You guys have a happy life together. See ya. Bye. Bye. See ya. Say bye-bye, Charlie. These little kitties are actually not strays because the animal shelter is here. They take care of them all and they make sure they're all vaccinated and up to date on their shots. So they're healthy, happy little kitty cats. They are very happy little cats. And, and they're they, so affectionate. Yeah, they get this whole site all to themselves because people can't go down in there. Yeah. Probably the coolest fact about this place, other than it's overrun with kittens, is that this is supposedly where Julius Caesar was murdered here in this area. So the ruins aren't as glamorous maybe as the Colosseum, but it's a pretty cool stop for the history aspect and just pet a cat if you want. All right, y'all. <laughs> Final sight of the day we want to see. We found this epic lookout that we're on our way up to right now. Maybe I didn't really realize it was going to be such a steep incline. I was about to say, maybe we should have done the intro at the bottom of the hill instead of halfway up. Yeah. Woo. But we're almost there. We have three more flights of stairs. And we're actually trying to go pretty fast because we were trying to catch the sunset. But we might, but we might be like it. 20 minutes too late. We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> we made it to the top, y'all. <laughs> we had to run a little bit, but we made it. Yeah, a little bit sweaty. But it's actually really cool up here. You can see all of the city over here. There's a few trees in the way, but other than that, it's really cool. There are a bunch of little stalls and food trucks and stuff. Also, I don't know if it's birds or just a big horde of bats, but they are buzzing atop the city and it looks incredible. It's such a huge school of bats. Is that what it, you call them, a school? I don't probably know. Probably not. But, but it looks like a school of fish, the way it moves. Seeing that over the city, it's really incredible. Yeah. So Rome is apparently known as the city of seven hills, but this hill is the honorary eighth hill from what I read. So it's not one of the main ones, but it gives you a great view of the whole city. Mm -hmm. And you can see off in the distance, all the mountains and everything. You can see quite a bit from up here. And we're also gonna be, as usual, marking everything that we're doing today in the description below. Yeah. So you can find all these spots when you come to Rome. Yeah. So we didn't exactly catch the sunset, but we got a beautiful view of the city, so that's awesome. But now we're going to go eat again, because it's dinner time, y'all. Rome is actually the birthplace of the dish carbonara, which maybe you've heard of before. We actually had a really cool place picked out that we wanted to go to, but we showed up and turns out it's closed. <laughs> we are not having good luck. <laughs> no, I feel like that's been the theme of our Italy trip. Everything's been closed, but that's okay. Yeah, because we did a little deep dive when we were up on the viewpoint and we found a place that was nearby at the very least. Um, not sure how local it is, but it is a little bit away from the uh, tourist walking street here in a Travestia. God, we still can't say the, the name of this area properly. But I ordered the carbonara. It has arrived. And carbonara is basically just uh, spaghetti and you have some hard cheese in there. Either pancetta or guanciale. This is guanciale, which is basically pork jowl, which is the cheek of the pig. And there are eggs in there as well. Wow, it smells so cheesy and savory and delicious. I think it's going to be pretty good. Hopefully, because we're kind of taking a gamble in this place. This just looks so gluttonous and delicious. Oh yeah, whoa, looks really hot. <laughs> Let's give the uh, carbonara a try. It is pretty dang delicious. The uh, real star of this is the guanciale. It's these little chunks of pork that have a little bit of a crispiness on them and you can just taste the fire in them, which is the best part of it. And the rest of it is just really subtle and really simple. It's, I thought it was just gonna be this overpowering cheesy flavor, but it's really not. It's a very simple, subtle pasta dish. The pork is super tasty. It's almost like little bits of pork crackling. It even has a bit of a crunch to it, but it really has a similar flavor to like a chicharrones or something like that. Pepper is also another very, <clears throat> it's actually in my throat right now. <laughs> Pepper is another very important component of this dish. So you can see the little bits of pepper in there, but I love the little burst of pepperiness that it adds. But if you get one big whole chunk of it, <laughs> it can go down your throat the wrong way. That's what's happening to me right now. But it's really good, I promise. I went with another local Roman spaghetti dish. So this is spaghetti alla amatriciana. 
I think that's right. Unlike Eric's, mine has a nice tomato base. It still has the guanciale in there, so the pork gel, but it looks like it's cut potentially differently. So it's tomatoes, pecorino, and then that delicious pork. And it smells so good. I was really hoping for a tomato-y pasta sauce. Oh, mm, that's good. I just have to say, I love all the fresh pasta here in Italy. It actually tastes like pasta instead of just being like a vessel for having sauce shoved down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cheese on here, it's so nice. It's a little sharp. And then with the pork and the tomato sauce, it's just such a hearty, delicious pasta dish. I love it. On a lot of menus here in Italy, you're gonna see your first courses, then your second courses. Now dishes like this, these pasta dishes, are gonna be on the first course usually, at least that's what I've seen. But it's funny because they're a little bit cheaper and they're meant to be, you know, the starter, but they're so big at some places. Like yeah, this is a big this portion. Yeah, a pretty big portion. Some have much smaller ones, but this is a great value. I think each of these was nine or 10 euros a piece, yeah. which seems to be pretty on par with what we've been seeing throughout the day, so. Yeah, and Most I don't know people, how you could get a second dish after this. I mean, Most people do a starter, a first and a second and then dessert oh my word if you guys can do that kudos to you because this is about as much as we can do it has been such a fun day obviously rome was not built in a day and it is not meant to be seen in one day so when you come if you can have more days do it if not hopefully this guide will help you but it is time to put the camera away and get to work on this pasta so we will be heading to matera tomorrow Mm -hmm. And off yeah, to more we're gonna get out of, of the big big cities. Yeah. We just wanted to make a brief stop in the big city. Small cities from here on out. We're not going to Albania. Sorry to break it to you guys. We really wanted to, but where we wanted to go is now closed for the winter, and so instead we're gonna go to Sicily. Yep. So even more Italy coming at you. Yeah. All right. Good night, adventures. We'll see you on the road.